Товарищи, расступитесь! Дайте товарищу мистеру пройти, пускай он пройдет! Сейчас стоп, пошли! Please, one, one at a time, one at a time. Uh, uh, Sykes, uh, Daily Mirror, what are you hoping to achieve by meeting Mr. Stalin? Uh, I have just come from President Roosevelt. And now I want to compare Mr. Stalin. I need to see if these two brains can really work towards the world state that I believe may be the only hopeful destiny of mankind. At some ambition. Mr. Sykes, this is the most important mission of my life. very immoral person. I have preyed upon people who love me. I have never given any person disinterested love. I am writing a report about it to myself. A reckoning for my actions. I spoke out for free love My relation with her is a story of foolishness. It is only now that I admit how confused I have been. I have faked a front to the world. Ladies and gentlemen, humanity is obsessed by sex. But I have always been disposed to take sex rather lightly and to think we make a quite unnecessary amount of fuss about it. <laughs> <laughs> At the present moment, men and women are so hemmed in by law and convention that to experiment in free love, you must be base. To experiment starts with being damned. <laughs> A Fabian Casanova. A Cupid of socialism. Now, colouring the cheeks of a bishop does little for this organisation and nothing for your reputation as an author and a man of science. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Mr Shaw is precise. I have become a symbol against all that is hateful and hostile to youth and tomorrow. But today, birth control is elevating men and women alike from the involuntary animal privilege. Free love will replace enforced childbearing and, in so doing, release mankind from the cruelty of nature. No, I have not seen that written in any Magna Carta, Wells. <laughs> <laughs> well, these things must constitute a Magna Carta of women, Shaw. <laughs> Extraordinary animals. Driven only to conquer the earth. 
Just look at them, Jane. Jane. You must suppress any jealous impulse. We are the best companions in the world. But our alliance can never be an intense sexual companionship. I understand. And what could be more rational than for those of us with an excess of sexual energy to assuage each other? A normal human being is not properly balanced without an active sex life. Sex is as necessary as fresh air. By day, I am a jaded spectator of all the half-baked wonders Soviet Russia has to show me. And the strain is complicated by the fact that I am under pressure to complete this autobiography. I wanted a life that would stand examination. But my fancies were uncontrollable, and my conduct remains disingenuous. I doubt if there is any other woman in the world for me now. I cared for her too much. And these latest experiences make me more and more determined to grapple with her. Mr. Wells' mannerisms in his novel Marriage are more infuriating than ever. The sex obsession lies clotted like cold white sauce. Unwholesome irritant. Rebecca West. She's a suffragette, isn't she? Ah, old spinster. I knew it. He is the old maid amongst novelists. There's only one thing for it. We'll have a round. Strong and dark, really. Incredible, Miss Hutchinson. Just push it in, like so. In ten minutes, it's tea time. And there lies the man of modern science. Oh. Hello. Miss Hutchinson, it's a lovely day. I want you to be in the garden, collecting flowers. H.G. Wells, old maid. Welcome to Eastern Glebe. Rebecca West. Tea. No sugar. Right then. Rebecca, you're Jewish? It's from Ibsen. My real name's Cecily Fairfield. I find Norwegian heroines more enigmatic. I've heard you described as hard as nails, a cross between a char and a gypsy. Actually, you're exactly what I expected. Fine grey eyes, untidy hair, parted like a man's dressed like that rare thing, a woman careless of her beauty. As a woman, I dress only for myself. I only know that people call me a feminist whenever I express views that uh, differentiate me from a doormat or a prostitute. So you don't defer to men? Men are good at moving pianos or hair cutting. Women should be saved the more important jobs. And what is more important than the responsibilities of marriage and motherhood? <laughs> Marriage is a bourgeois contract. But a contract that brings its material comforts. A woman needs more than a husband who mounts her like a steamer refueling at a coaling station. I've never seen a coaling station quite as elegantly clad as Mrs. Wells. But at your discretion. The maintenance of penniless womanhood is the nearest the English male can get to the spiritual delights of the harem. No wonder you wish to keep us all there. You stand up to my opinions very stoutly, Miss West.
still, a mere ripple in the duck pond of masculine complacency. Mr. Wells? You dismiss God, Wells. Like Darwin, you require certain proof. If God Almighty exists, he doesn't love any of us. I tell you, James, God's a sadist. A man's an ape, not an angel. I know nothing of God. I believe in beauty and in writing. My God is in art. My wife also worships beauty. For her, beauty is something very definite, a precious jewel to be discovered and worshipped. For me, beauty is incidental. Nature degrades, tortures, and kills the weakest. <laughs> then we should all go back in the water, do a few strokes. <laughs> when it comes to exertion, Shaw, I'm damned. <laughs> See, the ideal for a scientific civilization is to prevent those weaklings being born. People of exceptional quality must be ascendant. There must be competition in life of some sort to determine who gets pushed to the edge. And who were your winners? Ah, I call them the samurai, an educated order who govern utopia. Oh, you believe in utopia? Utopia is a place where men and women are happy and laws are wise and all that is tangled and confused in human affairs has been unraveled and put right. And are we, your samurai, myself and the horizontal author, Mr. James? <laughs> a certain proportion of men at ease is good for the world, but the samurai are there to keep the specific average rising. And what about those who don't measure up? I mean, the crippled, the retarded. Well, you would need some kind of social surgery. Maybe we'd put the deficient on some colonial island where they'd be fenced in and forbidden the common run of men. Ensuring survival of the fittest by elimination of the unfit. I'm for the challenge, but against the remedy. You talk an original language, Wells. It's from Miss Rebecca West. She's asked to see me again. <laughs> Can I be of assistance? The geraniums have been lovely all summer, but now they're almost over. We'll have to be taken from their tubs. I came to ask if you were all right. I know Miss West. She is determined. H.G. loves his homes, doesn't he? Ever since his terrible kidney illness, he's... He's loved designing and building to suit his needs. I suppose it's about being alive and leaving some sort of physical mark. Jane, this is the most unconventional of marriages. My husband must find his outlet. He's like a rare orchid and will wither if placed in the shade. As long as H.G. tells me everything, I do believe all will be well. Don't look so sad. I hear that in the Orient, there are stranger arrangements than the ones we have.
Utopia is a place where men and women are happy and laws are wise. What a lovely dream. Social surgery. Utopia will kill all deformed births. All that is tangled and confused in human affairs has been unraveled. I suppose that's the whole point of sex with you, isn't it? It's also tried and tested. Hmm. I'm like the drunken sailor, newly ashore, who declares, I want a woman! <laughs> in the crudest way. Oh, thank God. Au revoir, virginity. You are a mistress to be proud of. Mm. Oh, only a brave man would dare attempt to steal you. Mm. You're like a jaguar and a panther. Two big cats lording the jungle. <laughs> hmm. And how has this cat remained uncaged? Mm. So strong and clever with your sharp teeth, vicious claws. <laughs> Listen, Rebecca. I'll help you all I can. And I'll take the risk of its being known about. But I trust you implicitly to do your best that it isn't known about. Oh my, not so much Jaguar as Kitten. It is one of the least of my demands that I should be well thought of by anybody or anything. But for you, I promise. And what does the wicked Salome get in return? Hmm. Yes, madam. You have come to assist the Russian people. But what can humanity learn from your people of Mars? <laughs> ah, well, Martians are the ultimate species, miles ahead of us in cleverness. And how do these people of Mars make love? <laughs> Excuse me, I asked, how do they make love? They don't. Um, there is no love life on Mars. Seems like they miss a lot of fun, don't you know? <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, through the past thousand centuries, man has been presuming upon his good fortune in his headlong conquest of the planet. But is the human mind sufficiently adaptable to survive into the future? Can we survive this new environment our cleverness has made? We need to alter our understanding of time. Now, time is like the pictures on a cinema screen that follow one another so rapidly that they seem continuous, but you can move about in time. It is only a kind of space. Observe. This lever, pushed here, reverses the motion. I jump back. This lever also sends the machine gliding into the future. Time traveling 50 or 100 times faster than we are. The future. Windows, Millie, please. A new epoch has dawned for human beings. 
inventions compete for the attention. X-rays, radio waves. Telephones. The motor car. I remain an optimist. I merely admit that our species is in a race with time. And we need to conquer time. Good night, HG. And you, Jen? Conquer time. Possibilities are in. Surely accomplish anything. A new epoch has dawned for human beings. Make the machine work. Our species is in a race with time. I am wounded. I have been wounded as I have never been wounded by any other human being before. It is unbelievable. I prowl about my room and plan what I should do with the rest of my life. But I had hoped so surely to spend with her. Of course I'll be here. Last. Publishers paying for pros. <laughs> You're becoming quite a prophet, Wells. Now look here, James. I do not seize upon any wild idea that comes into my head just to be sensational. No. I depict the future as I think it will be. Ha uh -huh. Let's play a game. Oh, yes. you draw your prophecies, HG, and we'll try and guess what they are. Ah, good idea. He is an accomplished artist, well, so this is going to be interesting. I have to tell you, Rebecca. He attracts beautiful women. Oh, Wells is a magnificent man. He makes a woman feel right in her defiance. What do I foresee in my crystal ball? Oh, 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 oh uh, that, that, that uh, moving picture box in your home. Oh, Bingo. Well done. Now, Wells is hooked. I should alert his dear wife. Jane has nothing to fear. Why should I want to be in a man's story when my own story is so interesting? Oh, what do they call uh, it? Yes, I know. It's a land ironclad. Target oh, identified. Well done. Yeah, I, I am impressed. This is a black sphere, two feet in diameter, which upon touching the ground, sprinkles the earth with radiant matter, like so. <laughs> I think I'm being a bit wretched. It <laughs> spreads itself out into a monstrous cavern of fiery energy. Excuse me. A month ago. I am to blame. I, I should have taken precautions. Will you keep the child? 
I have no illusions about the difficulties facing a mother and a child. An unmarried mother is the most outcast thing on earth. A broken thing. And a bastard. But society has to change. Of course. Well, you can rely on me to take the necessary provisions. It would save Jane enormous embarrassment if our uh, secret was kept safe from our acquaintances. Indiscretion would doom us both. Well, I, I'm glad beyond gladness that you are to have this child. I will find a place where no one will know you even exist. We must do what we can for her. Have you found a spot? Yes. I've uh, been in touch with the lawyers. We have a, a plan of action. And afterwards, the three of us shall go on as before. are altered every time a man and a woman associate. Oh. I believed every word she said to me. I have destroyed her letters. I have cancelled her from my will. Men and women are incompatible things. staying here for six months. And your husband? Mr. West is in the cinematograph business. He will be visiting, but uh, we'll need a quiet room to work in. Well, you've pretty much got the old house to yourself. We don't get many films round here. He's famous, is he? No. Mr. West is just starting out. You won't have time to visit very often. Right then. I'll show you to your room. We'll go outside. I haven't eaten since noon. Is there a restaurant in the back? Depends on what you fancy. There's pie, chips, or eels.
it's, it's really uh, quite incredible. The Martian reproduces by a kind of budding off. This process is entirely voluntary. The young forms on the outside of its sexless parent and in due time becomes separated from it. And who looks after the baby Martian? The young obviously are looked after by their own single parent. And there is no conflict of interests or, or again, emotions, um, such as we see uh, doing such destructive work in unenlightened homes in, in our world. Sounds very heartless. Well, advantages abound. If we could live without emotion, we'd all be masters of our own mistakes. Rebecca has telephoned. I will be away this weekend. Of course. I think the CEO will do you both good. Give Rebecca my best. little and human and suddenly you have me. I am compelled to take care of you. <laughs> I'm perfectly capable of taking care of myself. Norfolk is the new Riviera. I have everything here. Mediterranean skies and cocktails on the pier. <laughs> you care for Jane very much. She is, as you say, your great obligation. Rebecca must be bright and clever oh, with yeah. a pen to match if she's affected you so much. I met her at the beginning of her career. But I've never met somebody so brilliant before. Also helpless and headlong. And the child. It happened to us in a distraught, preoccupied way. Listen, Wells, this could be a disaster for you. These are bad times to be complicating things, and someone of your renown will be looked upon to pronounce. If Russia makes war on Austria, then Germany will make war on Russia. Not if the Kaiser is wise, because that would bring in France. In any case, I trust you will be against intervention. I would not be sorry to live, to see this war. It may be a tremendous catastrophe in one sense, but in another, it is a huge step for human life. We want nations to feel the need for one another. Only through such crises as these can the world reconstruct itself. For God's sake, man, we are talking about human lives. Thousands. These lessons require time and stresses if they are to be learned properly. It is the end of years of evil suspense. Every sword drawn against Germany now is a sword drawn for peace. Aren't these the weapons you feared? Isn't this the island you put Dr. Moreau on? Destruction not by genetics, but by shells and airships. Well, that's coward's talk. Sure. I never saw you as a warmonger, Wells.
Mr. Wells here? Well then. Thank you for letting me know. That's all, Mrs. Allen. Say hello to our little Pekingese. What's his name? Anthony. You take him. Months of nothing but bloody gulls. <laughs> Come on, I'm getting up. Time for a hobble and a stagger. Miss Rebecca West is on the march again. <laughs> children, this house, my position. In many ways, I admire her because she's free. She doesn't seem to care. And she is a fighter and he respects fighters. of children by the wayside, stories of wounded men bayoneted or burnt alive, the massacres of harmless children, of lootings and filthy outrages. Millie, get Mr. Wells some tea, would you? They are apes with science in their hands, my God. But we shall teach them a lesson yet. Come here, Mr. Wells. I'm a huge admirer of your work. Thank you, David. I've been reading your column on smashing German imperialism. Very desirable. <laughs> You're a great patriot, sir. A great, great patriot. Thank you, sir. Mr. Wells, we need you creative types. You've got a good nose. I want you to work for us. Convince the German people they can't win and that failure to surrender will... Well, it'll be bam for the lot of them. England, sir, is fighting the greatest war in history. I want you to go to the front. Take some of your writer friends, men with metal only, mind, and take a tip from me. Waders and boots. You'll need them. Suspense. 
every sword drawn against Germany now is a sword drawn for peace. under the cover of aunt and uncle, are we? If that's what your mother wants. And am I to stay on here? Confined like some prisoner of war? How much longer can this be? We'll reconsider when I'm back. I'm writing again. A novel about a traumatized soldier. And you? I refuse to play the artist. I'm a journalist. <laughs> You're wrong. We can only come at truth from life and personal experience. I've always written as straight as I can, just as I walk as straight as I can. It's the best way to get there. <laughs> you should be careful. I can see it now, commuters on the 805 from Bexley reading their daily mail. H.G. Wells loses his imagination. I thought I should come and see you. I'm so ashamed. These lads going to their deaths, while men of 40 lie snug at home. This war will leave the world a land of cripples, old men and children. The best of Jerusalem, mown down for a worthless mile of mud. I did not believe that this war could be like other wars. I thought we had grown up wiser at last. It seemed like the dawn of a vast clearing up. The common sense would break out like a flame and consume all this foolery of empires, banners of militarism. But this war has become a monstrous absurdity. Ministry of Propaganda on the line for you, sir. What the hell is
is this man? While I have been trying to develop a campaign of reassurance, our newspapers have been conducting a violent campaign. A campaign of indiscriminate and irrational denunciation of all things German. Wells, you are the head of the propaganda committee. We are fighting for king and country. They are fighting for Kaiser and the fatherland. It's six of one and half a dozen of the other. We need to tell the Germans they have nothing to fear from us or our allies. When this war is over, Wells, we'll grind their noses in the mud. We'll wring out every mark. We'll kneecap the German swine so they'll never stand up again. For God's sake, sir. This is no better than some tennis tournament where competitor after competitor is eliminated. We are letting disaster draw nearer and nearer. Human society will be eliminated before the tournament ends. The decision to perish or escape has to be made within a very limited time. The country has little appetite for pacifism, Wells. Five or six countries at the most have it within their power to end modern warfare forever. We need a great council, some overriding body that will deal with things more broadly than this nationalistic imperialism. I am proposing a world government controlling everything. International aviation with a, an airways board to police the skies, a global currency, a pan-global federation that will do nothing less than supersede the iniquities of empire. You would see her royal majesty at a trestle table with the Negroes, would you? Well, there can be no world peace without a practical retirement of the monarchy, graceful or Graceless as royalty may choose. God damn it, man, this isn't fucking Mars. I am talking about the future! This is child's play to the sort of war that will have to be waged within 20 years' time. Rebecca, calm down. Don't patronize me! One of the maids has threatened to expose us. Don't you have any idea how hard this is for me? No one has been here for three weeks. It hardly helps that whatever arrangements we make are spoilt by the relentless disapproval of your mother and her absurd campaign for us to marry. You could marry me? What difference would that make? We could go about quite openly. Rebecca, I have a wife and two children. Oh. You may find Jane's captured wedding ring not nearly as magic in compelling the world to respect you as you imagine. Oh, yes, we shouldn't forget Jane. Jane in her lovely house and spacious lawns, placid understanding, frigid Jane, with Rebecca, the casual sexual fill-in. I cannot tolerate this growing mania of yours about the injustice of my treatment to you in, in not abandoning Jane. I could give you marriage, but it would not do anything for either of us. Is that the eminent author? speaking or the journalist I have been honest with you from the beginning and you have been happy in that arrangement I am not Jane it is an arrangement I can no longer bear Aim for the yellow one, Frank. I think you'll stand a better chance. <sighs> Chip, it's your turn. How is Rebecca? She has difficulty with the staff. They bully her, make trouble for her. And she misses society. Why are you so unhappy? Rebecca is complicated. She can be demanding. But you have so many demands of your own. Perhaps Rebecca needs time to understand that. It's a steep climb for someone so young and so full of spirit. Darling Jane, 
After all these years, you ought to have been weeping your eyes out. You're betraying me in some unpleasant fashion with a lover, yet you betray no resentment. No protesting egotism. Dear Jane, you are my peace. It's turning cold. Let's go inside. Dearest, are you unwell? Jane, would you mind calling Bernard Shaw? Our world is changing, and it is changing with an ever-increased violence, but the forces that bring us nearer to one another have been increasing. Books, newspapers, air travel. We are rapidly becoming a one worldwide community of interdependent human beings. Man is unknowingly being brought together as a species. This is our chance. Our chance to do what? I've been thinking about it in the wrong manner. We have to start from the bottom, bypass the politicians, speak directly to the people. What we need is a world encyclopedia to educate this world community, a, a, a net for the indexing, summarizing, and release of knowledge. The whole human memory made accessible to every individual. And I shall make a beginning. It will be a history book, a history of the whole of mankind, read by every nationality under the sun. Don't you see? I believe that from dreams, utopia will finally come. Welcome back to London. Might as well take my chances. I've hardly seen you. Uh, we've been hard at work on a book. Oh, a book. Nothing short of an outline of history itself, showing the inevitable move of man towards a world government. History is a place of wonderlands. It has no outlines. You don't understand how exciting this is. We are undertaking a great challenge. And who's we? Jane. She's doing the research with me.
I am speaking to you tonight about the communist capture of Russia. Her revolution is a great wind of indignation and despair. Here are people in their millions taking control of their fate. Her peril today is our experience tomorrow. We must help these heroic people. That way, we can start to unite the world. I'm leaving for Russia on Friday. But how can you leave? Things have been bad since the revolution. They're in a god-awful state, and I mean to help. Then I shall come. No. You are not interested. But I am. Not as I am. You would turn it into a jolly holiday. If you desert me, if you shame me by deserting me, I will never forgive you. Never. Not in all my days. Look after the Pekingese. What the barbana to my side? Wells! At last! Tikhonov, oh. Sergei, Mura. <laughs> Meet a voyager oh. from planet England. Hello! <laughs> Mr. Wells has brought us starving peasantry. British Greece! Uh, no, butter! Ah! From Devon. God knows how it all stayed in one piece. <laughs> I admire that you have come here. Russia is isolated. Russia is a country casting itself anew. It's men like Maxim Gorky who must be at its helm. I don't believe the class struggle gets us anywhere. So you're not a Marxist, Mr. Wells? <laughs> I encounter busts of Marx everywhere. About two thirds of his face is a vast, solemn, woolly beard. <laughs> beard cultivated and thrust upon the world. I've decided my next book will be The Shaving of Marx. <laughs> Careful, Mr. Wells. Russia is my first love. Your only love? At the present, yes. My husband was killed by the peasants after the revolution. I fled to Petrograd. Now I'm one of Lenin's liberated intelligentsia. And how liberated is that? For an adventurous woman in a dangerous world, there is no limit to the freedom she can use. With Gorky? He's impotent. Unlike you, Mr. Wells. I hear that vous adorez les femmes. Well, there comes a moment in the day when you have written your pages and there is nothing further to be done. Then comes that hour when you are bored. And that's the time for sex. Anthony out of school. He found out about us. And they say it's worse that you're so well known. I feel we should go up there and talk to the headmaster. It's already uh, too much to bear. To own. Rebecca, I've had an affair in Petrograd. I expect she was expensive. 
her and talk like that. Oh. A two-week elopement and already she's off limits, is she? Can I know who she is? Corky's secretary. A secretary? At least her love letters will be well typed. All the other women I've ever had to deal with have accepted these inattentions and disappearances as things in my nature. You talk about free love, yes. But only if it means Jaguar can suck at every watering hole. What about me? You pitiless, clueless, idiotic fool! Rebecca, you are adhesive. Emotionally adhesive. I abhor that accusation! It's your nature to darken your world and blacken every memory. So long as I love you, you will darken mine. Never have you loved as people deserve to be loved. Not me, not your wife, not your child. Not even this work to which you sacrifice us all in turn. That's unfair. I always knew that you would hurt me to death one day. You want a world of people falling over each other like puppies. I should have seen it long ago. I think you are wise to save yourself from me. And if I can be any kind of companion to you, I shall be glad. We'll go on with money as we've done before. Ten years. Finally, Panther is set free. I admire her. Her writing is so modern and heartfelt. And she is proud and equal. But unless the proud and equal woman travels an identical road, how is one to keep her? You have been a model of patience. And you have won. No. I adapted. Survival of the fittest, remember? Telephone for you, sir. <laughs> Wells here. Something terrible. Absolutely terrible. Goodness, Millie, calm down. Jane? What what about Jane? I'll be right there. I'm afraid it's cancer of the uterus. How long? Six months.
dear Mora. I am sorry to tell you that my wife died of cancer. I must still search for what I call my lover shadow. This fair and lovely person needs to understand me and my warfare of ideas. She is lovely, wise, and wholly devoted to me. My dear A.G., I was so very sorry to hear about your pain. We are all looking for our lover shadow, the person who mirrors our every awakening hour and the dreams within our sleep. I miss you, A.G. Eternally yours, Mura. Disaster draw nearer and nearer. How far have we mobilized our moral forces for the effort ahead? And that is the urgency for my journey to Russia in a few weeks' time. The calling has never been greater. That was the celebrated author, Mr. H.G. Wells. And you can hear Mr. Wells on the freedom of writers. His new limited role as the English. Applause for 8G. Listen, you know I'm planning to see Stalin with your companionship. To exhilarate me, I shall have ten times the strength. Now you sound like a true comrade. Let's drink. To your revolutionary, one world. (laughs) 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 Stalin is a true hero to socialism. Stalin is an ego-centered autocrat with a political party disciplined to death. So then, Wells, why do you bother? Because though I have lost faith in politicians, I can see the gathering storm. It's coming right at us. God, Wells, a nice evening this is turning out to be. Listen, I realize now that we need men of power, and I'm going to persuade them to think afresh to commit to breaking down all our petty prejudices. <laughs> it's our only hope. Silly old man. Right? <laughs> Silence, please. <laughs> Maura, since you arrived in England four years ago, you have restored my spirits. I feel revitalized. I want you to come completely in my life, to launch upon a great adventure together. Will you do me the honor 
of accepting me as your loving husband? Why marry H.G.? I would bore you if you had me always. You made me see Russia. Why not now? You know why. Russia is barred to me. It's too dangerous. Simply by leaving, I'm a traitor. Mora. No, E.G. It's not possible. is the most ambitious thing I have ever done in my life. But at present, there is enough powerful apparatus in the world to crush, smash, drown, suffocate, poison and scald 40 million people. We have to think less and less as citizens of our countries and more as citizens of the world. That's some ambition. Mr. Sykes, <clears throat> this is the most important mission of my life. Ah. Thank you so much. Great honor. Oh, not Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, Maxim. My old friend, Maxim, how are you? Welcome to Russia. We're all very excited. No. An international ambassador to the motherland. This works. Oh, thank you. You're not busy to drink vodka with a humble writer? Oh, our Stalin's not till Friday. Time to sober up. I hope so. <laughs> Come, the car awaits. To the party. To one world. And revolution through re-education. H.G., you should be careful. We have heard about your comments about Stalin. You once believed in freedom, Maxim. Freedom for writers, for scientists. You used to believe in the week going under. Don't you remember? It's this kind of rhetoric we hear from our fascist comrades now. When I was young. We were ignorant gardeners. Throwing down seeds. For tyrants. In Russia, everyone is free to come and go. Even Mura. She was staying here a week ago. She's been here three times in the past year. Mura Budberg is my oldest and closest comrade. I don't believe you, Gorky. Call her. She's only a short plane ride away. What are you so angry about? <laughs> We, Russian peasantry, have long been engaged in all kinds of deceit. You should know that. Being so intimately acquainted with the Soviet mind.
and come in. Good luck present for tomorrow. Oh, the flight was awful. You look tired, my dear. Your eyes are tired. Stalin prefers a strong looking man. Mora, you are a cheat. And a liar. Why did you do this to me? I was going to explain. It was all arranged suddenly. Gorky called me. Give me some time, she pleads, and I will explain everything. What are you talking about? Why do you spoil everything by putting me on trial like this? Why do you make it so that I have to put you on trial? Maxim is an old friend. I wanted to see Russia again. You don't know what Russia is to me. If I'd been seen with you, it would have put us both in danger. You could have been beside me to discuss my impressions. We could have made love again in Russia. Or is it that your relations with Gorky are so intimate that you can't be with both of us in the same place? You're paranoid. It's you I've been with for the past four years. Anyway, Maxim is ill. And this is the uh, <clears throat> first time you have visited Russia since you came out? The first, of course. Why do you go on lying? Three times you have been in Russia in the past 12 months! How can you think of that? Gorky told me. How could he? Because, to his satisfaction, I am the one to be sacrificed for Christ's sake, Mora! Am I nothing more than an adventure to you? Why betray me? Look, look, look at this. To my lawyers, I have taken you out of my will, and these are the letters I have been writing to you. I wanted a collaborator, someone who understood what I'm doing. Jane, was that me? You want all of us to live to your rules. But you're just a single human being like the rest of us. God's creature with all our weaknesses and our limitations. One single solitary individual in a need of a wife. Великий строя суфамирование из одного света. Макс и Марс. Скажите мне, господин Уэллс, зачем вы сюда приехали? Well, you and Roosevelt begin from two different starting points, but there is a kinship of ideas and needs. There are capitalists who are only interested in profits. But take Mr. Rockefeller or Henry Ford. 
These are great organizers. Socialism needs educated people like this. Gaspard in Wales, young and very, would do pretty bourgeoisie. Would pay it to me. Communist Gabriel Robot to me, class who Nasilo at Fichai Siloy. There is a mass of human beings ripe for common understanding. We only need to inform them. Marsianska in fantasy, we only stow zayet, ye angrio. Fas bosh no stow vi, but bosh is step in the communist chamber, we saw my etter as his guide. Mr. Stalin, I think I am more on the left than you are. Не кажется, что нет противоречия между индивидуальным интересом и интересом. All the people in the world in high positions are more or less accessible to me. But I cannot bring them into unison. I can talk to them. But I cannot compel their brains to see. Excessive militarism. The Soviet Union announced this morning that its troops had been called into Czechoslovakia at the urgent request. Made every three minutes, by day and by night, guided in the air and safely talked. Let me ask you one simple question: Do you want them to surrender? and honor for humanity. We can adapt to the new environment our cleverness has made. We must adapt. Listen to me. We are now in a race against time.
Well, stay with us to look at the lasting appeal of H.G. Wells, a new generation of devotees, including Jonathan Ross and Lord Hattersley. Pay tribute next. <laughs> 